I'm so excited about today's episode because we're going to talk about Google Slides and Google Slides for me have been such a game changer. I have used Google Slides in pretty much every aspect of my speech and language therapy and it has resulted in qualitative gains in my intervention. So I could give you 10 reasons why Google Slides are great to use in speech and language therapy, but instead I'm just going to focus on the top three. So we're going to talk about three reasons why you should definitely give Google Slides a try in your speech and language therapy. The first reason is the diversity of materials that Google Slides has for you to offer your students. So our students are growing up in an international age. The world is flat and their colleagues are not going to be from their communities. Their colleagues are going to be from all over the world. So different walks of life, different cultures, different languages. So we're going to want to expose them to that early on. What's nice about Google Slides is when I'm making stories for the children that have other children in it, I can use a child from Africa and a child's family from Africa in this story so that they're exposed to diversity early on. And I can, and I can also use different sounds. So for instance, one of the best things that's ever happened to me is I got to see a Komodo dragon at the St. Louis Zoo it was visiting there. And Komodo dragons, if you haven't seen them before, they look like dinosaurs. They're like real living dinosaurs for this day, right? And what I could do today with Google Slides is I could take a Komodo dragon picture in my Google Slides, and I could also add the sound effects, the real sounds that Komodo dragons make. I mean, think about how that up levels the therapy so much better than something you could buy from a website that has a little cartoon picture of a dinosaur. We can do so much better than that. And that's what's nice about Google Slides is that you have all of the sites around the world. You have all of the sounds around the world at your fingertips, and you can use them in speech and language therapy. That's really powerful stuff. So that's the number one reason why I say make some Google slide decks for your students. Go ahead and give them the whole world and give them the best that the internet has to offer. We're not talking about using videos here. We're talking about using the pictures and also using the sounds and recording the sounds and putting those in your slides so they can authentically hear what animals sound like, what people sound like all over the world, different environmental sounds. It's really fun and really great stuff. So that's the number one reason is that you have the best that the world has to offer for materials to use in your lessons and your digital lessons. Number two, the second reason why I would highly recommend using Google Slides if you don't already, is that Google Slides are multimodal. And what I mean by that is that you have the visual support, you can also put the print in your Google Slides, and you can also add some sound support in your Google Slides. You have total control. So what does that mean having that control? It's not about showing a video to the child and getting the child's attention on the cheap. And what I mean by on the cheap is by using quick movements like SpongeBob SquarePants or Dora the Explorer in which the child's brainstem is activated because the images are moving so quickly or using quick sounds like SpongeBob or Dora in which everyone is speaking really quickly at an exaggerated tone to stimulate the brain stem, stem in the fight or flight reaction. This, this is getting children's attention on the cheap. What we want to do instead is we want to get the children's attention by using the visual medium and by maybe slowly animating the images, having them slowly spin or slowly move across the screen. And that makes it more salient for the children. We know that from the research that a moving image draws greater attention than a still image does. And it also produces greater comprehension for children with autism, for instance. So that doesn't mean that we have to stimulate their brainstem with quick movements or with loud sounds. But what we could do instead is slowly have these objects move so that we can and make it salient what we're pointing out and we can improve comprehension that way. 
So that's something that's really nice about that. We could have the word printed. We could have the picture there with the word and we could add sound effects. So I could have the animal there. I could have the animal's name there and I could have the actual sound that the animal makes right there for the child. So I'm giving the child the top shelf of intervention. I'm taking advantage of maybe the print knowledge or taking advantage of the visual strengths. And I'm giving that, I'm coupling that with my auditory and with my own gestures. So that makes it multimodal. So that really up levels the quality of the intervention. So when I use Google Slides, I'm never playing YouTube videos or songs or anything of that nature. Instead, I'm using images that I animate, that I slowly move on my, on my press or I might point to, to it on my command. And I'm using sounds that are, um, that are, that help the child better understand the stimuli, not overwhelm the sound, child with sound. And I can also use print so we can take advantage of that print knowledge. And we could also teach uh, reading early on through print referencing. So once again, with Google Slides, I have all the materials at my fingertips so that I can go multimodal without having to spend hours and hours of flashcards with words printed on them and have them available at my fingertips. I have them right there in my slide decks. So the last reason, number three, that I love Google Slides, I mean, they're so good, is for extra home practice. So I have the Google Slides that are based on our weekly themes. And why weekly themes are so great, which they are, is because number one, the child comes to you with a weekly theme with prior knowledge and prior experiences. So that makes learning meaningful. So if, you, if it's at all possible where you work at a clinic or at a hospital, if you and the therapists and the teachers can have an agreed upon theme, that will strengthen the child's internal locus of control. That will strengthen the child's belief that they're in charge of the learning experience and they're leading the way in the learning experience. And they're going to learn more because they bring prior knowledge and experience to the new learning, which makes it more meaningful. So when learning is more meaningful, we know that children learn more quickly and they remember it better. Themes are also great because they make sure that the child is uh, exposed to diversity of experiences, not just what they love, their comfort zone. And this is very important. When I first started out as a speech pathologist and I specialize in working with children with autism, I would go to what they loved. Okay, you love trains, you love cause effect toys, you love vehicles, this is what we're going to use. But the problem with doing that is that we know that new is the spice of neuronal life. Diversity is extremely important when it comes to creating new neuronal connections when neuroplasticity is at its highest level. So what I mean by that is we have, a, if you don't use it, lose it brain. And we want to make sure to develop all aspects of the child's brain. So by limiting the activities we do to a small narrow scope, we risk losing these other opportunities for developing different neuronal connections. So what I like to do, it doesn't mean that we're going to not adapt, adapt our weekly themes to the child. If the child loves trains, we can have trains at the zoo. Hey, the trains can take the animals to the cage or to the animals to the zoo. We can easily incorporate what they love. If the child loves letters, hey, we can have the word animals at the end, which the child gets to put a, a piece in, but the child's also experiencing a new experience in which the child is saving the animals. So maybe they have a tiger in one hand here, and maybe they have the letter A for the word animals in the other, but it's very, very, very important to expose children to a variety 
of experiences. We know this from the neuroscience, and we also know this from the de facto research in which we look at children that engage in a variety of activities, children on the spectrum. And these children have much better outcomes than those who engage in a limited repertoire of activities. So it's not about ignoring their love or not following the child's lead. It's about not limiting their experiences. It's really important to expose them to new experiences in a meaningful way and taking what they love and integrating that into the weekly theme. It was kind of like um, what uh, Temple Grandin wrote about, about her love of animals. And what the excellent teachers did is they took that love of animals and they combined it to the subject matter. So how does the love of animals come into math? Or how does the love of animals come into science? And they took that love and instead of just focusing on animals, they immersed that into a variety of new experiences. Because remember, new is the spice of neuronal life. And if we have a, you, if you don't use it, lose it brain, we do not want to not use every aspect possible of these children's minds when neuroplasticity is at its highest level. So the third area that we're talking about here is the bringing it the home practice. So what I do is I just take the Google link that I have from my Google slide deck. And of course I end it with copy slash copy at the end. So the slide deck isn't ruined by anyone that gets their hands on it. It's, it's a copy. So they can do whatever they want with a copy. And then I share that copy to, with parents. So parents are able to take that and at home, they're able to reinforce the learning that's occurred in the school environment and creating that home to school bridge seamlessly. Parents love this. So what I find is parents will send me videotapes. For instance, in this week's lesson, we had combining words to create new words and we had like a tiger shark. And they would combine the words. When you put those words together, what does that make? And out would come a picture of a cool tiger shark. Well, what the children were doing is they were taking their toys after interacting with the parent and playing these games. And they were saying, cup, cake, cupcake. And they were taking their own toys and creating words with their own toys. So when I send these Google Slides activities home to the parents, it's not a screen to child interaction at all. It's a child to parent interaction in which the screen kind of serves like a book. It's a visual reference that supports learning at a very high level. But even better than a book, I would argue, it provides a great degree of degree of a greater degree of variety of experiences that support what the child is learning in other areas of the classroom, the therapy, the occupational therapist, and allows that to bring the, the child to bring all those new experiences home. So the parents are then given the Google Slides activities for each week, and they're saying, hey, why don't you pick an activity or two out that you think your child would enjoy and try that at home with the children, with your child. What parents always send me are activities in which the child takes what they've learned in the Google slide and uses it with their real toys in real life. Kind of like how children act out brown bear, brown bear with their animals after they read a book. They're doing the same thing with the Google slides. The Google slides sort of serves as an enhanced book with a little bit more bells and whistles, but it's not about stimulating the brainstem. It's about stimulating higher level thinking and using all of these tools to increase, increase engagement and provide a greater diversity of experiences. So I'm gonna leave it at that is I want you to go ahead, take this information, roll up your sleeves, go ahead and innovate practice and create a better world one child at a time. And uh, just as a side note, I have a wonderful course on May 15th that I'm doing on Google Slides. I highly recommend it. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be a two hour live digital course that I'm hosting in which I'm only gonna share with you the great strategies that are highly effective that kids love and great activities that you can use for the day. So it's gonna be two hours of ready to do 
functional activities that are super, super fun. And I can't wait for you to, to try 